I'm not sure whether I didn't expect to be making this video so soon or not at all. You may have noticed in the background of many of my videos for the past six, seven, eight years. This little guy, a little water bottle I got from the Plex team. It's a little beat up now. I actually used it as my main water bottle for a while before we upgraded. Once we did, it became a set dressing. Because for a while, I did sponsored Plex videos. It was one of, at the time, it didn't pay a ton. But at the time, it was one of my more lucrative brand deals. They had a brand deal arrangement with myself. I'm not going to out the individual other creators. But a lot of other creators that were covering NVIDIA Shield-like devices at the time for building Plex servers, running Plex libraries, and we would all have a set number of videos per month that we would try to hit to be able to get paid for. It was a cool deal, especially because I loved Plex. I was an early subscribe. I had a lifetime Plex subscription in 2014 when I was still living at home with my parents in college. I had started ripping my own media. I, I was making lots of videos about it at the time. And Plex was this perfect solution to just run on a spare computer and stream that media elsewhere in my home so that my family could watch it on the TV, in the family room, and all kinds of stuff. It's, it, it was the perfect product at the time. The scene evolved rapidly. We got lots of devices to run it. We got lots of smart TVs. And, and the scene changed dramatically. But it all kind of came to a head in 2019 where I burned a bridge with Plex. I basically deleted them as a sponsor and they paid me for it. In 2019, this was very close to the end of the year, late September. It was one of the last videos I filmed that had my cat at the time in the background who passed away before I even finished editing the video. That sucked. Not Plex's fault, just to be clear. But I had filmed a video reacting to some news that Plex was starting to integrate with more streaming services, that they were gonna offer streaming media that was legitimate, you know, not ripped by you, in the software. And I saw this as a major red flag. I spent some time. I actually held my video for it for a while, which is part of why things kind of unfolded in the timeline that they did. I held my video for a while and really kind of sat with it to decide how I felt about it. And ultimately, I came away from that news feeling like things were about to change not for the better. That Plex was going to start making moves that did not benefit the home streamer, the home media ripper side of things. I truly believed that. And I expressed that in my video. I was like, hey, I hope this is not the case, but it looks like Plex is trying to be more of a for-profit kind of bigger company. They're going to try to go legit. They're going to start integrating features that try to pull you away from just managing your own media, however you might be acquiring that wink wink into more quote unquote legitimate things. And we saw a lot of that end up happening. That video was not well received. On top of very clearly, like Plex paid me for that video. I turned it in. I got a video game or a couple dinners worth of money for it. And then obviously I never heard from them again, which is, I knew what I was doing. That's fine. I have another sponsor to burn soon in a similar regard, but I made that video. I was not happy making the video, but I felt in my bones, like something was going to happen in that way. And that video was not real received. I had tons of comments saying that I was just looking for controversy, that I was too cynical, that I was grasping at straws or whatever, that there's no sign that they weren't going to keep supporting the home lab enthusiasts kind of thing for the most part. And I had hoped that was true. And for the first couple of years, it felt that way because we ran, we ran right into the pandemic where suddenly everyone was at home. Everyone was diving into physical media more and managing their own libraries and they introduced the watch together feature and things were looking pretty great. But in the background, they were still doing a lot of these things. They were integrating more streaming services from publishers. They were releasing more cloud-based tools. They had a title integration for a little while and then that went away, which made a lot of people mad. And they continued making these steps where the improvements were not for the home server Plex running people, but for people who would use their app as yet another streaming service or like a hub for streaming services, it felt like their goal was. And we waited and waited for better H.265 and AV1 support. We waited and waited for functional subtitle support because for half the movies you ripped, if you had subtitles on, suddenly you had to transcode the video instead of direct play and it was just like impossible for 4K HDR videos. That was kind of the breaking point for me. I was a lifetime Plex Pass holder until 2024, where eventually, like every other household in the pandemic, you know, can't, we, we all came out of the pandemic deciding that we can't hear movies or shows without subtitles. We were watching a lot more with subtitles and Plex's handling of them was just useless. And that's what, that 
plus a lot of updates that constantly broke my server. I was running Plex server on my Unraid machine and they would constantly keep updating the front end client apps for my smart TV or whatever that would break compatibility with my server. And I tried to update my server as little as possible to keep things from breaking on top of the fact that the Unraid app distribution of the server wasn't always, you know, as fast as the full server-side release. It just kept breaking things. And I finally reached my breaking point last year where we switched to Jellyfin. And it's been it's been rough, like, man, getting everything converted over. The apps aren't as friendly. You know, there, there, there isn't one on the Samsung TV, so I have to use Apple TV and then get a third-party client there. And there's been some quirks with the library management. But subtitles are way better supported. Stability is infinitely better. And the past six months have seen a lot of bad decisions from Plex. That at this point, I think Plex is going completely anti-user for their users and kind of living up to everything that I was worried that they would do. First, they announced that they were ending the Watch Together feature, that we're not in the pandemic anymore, so people don't need to watch movies together anymore, so we're not going to support this feature. Just taking a feature away, which made little sense and made a lot of users pretty mad. Apparently, a lot of people really use that feature with no real justification. And these kinds of changes make less and less sense the more you dig into how Plex works. If you are unfamiliar with Plex, if you're coming into this and being like, I, I, I just heard about it, I want to take a look at it, what's going on, which by the way, goodbye. Plex is a piece of software that you run on a computer where, check, where you set up a couple library folders like movies, TV shows, anime, whatever, and it will allow you to organize all of that media, set up different users, so you, just like on Netflix or Hulu or whatever, so that you can track who has watched what, and then stream that to other computers or devices in your home. And then if you set it up real fancy and have enough hardware, you can start streaming it over the internet to your family members or to yourself out of the house on vacation or something like that. That is what it is. You are not using their cloud services to store your media and stream it. You're not using their resources for anything beyond a basic like DNS lookup for your account because everything's account based now you have to sign in and when the sign in breaks your entire Plex server goes down which was another frustrating point that kind of was my breaking point last year but like you're not using their services to run your server it's all your hardware you're responsible for all that so when they make a change like removing watch together it feels like it's supposed to be some sort of profit profit driven thing but you're not you, they're not paying for that at all not the traffic not the the the, the hosting, not the transcoding, they're not paying for that. So that was starting where I was like, okay, Plex is really going to start going downhill soon. I think this was earlier this year or late last year. And then they released a new iOS app for update for their iOS version, which a lot of people were really excited for a couple of the features for. And then immediately to them, it felt like the worst case scenario for a new app. Features were missing. Functionality was downgraded. It was an outright disappointment. And then just this past week, they announced that you will have to have a Plex Pass subscription in order to stream media to people outside of your home. Now, in a vacuum, on its own, I'm not sure I would disagree with this. Yeah, okay. If you want to do this, especially for a feature, people running their big Plex libraries with hundreds of people streaming from it with multiple GPUs that everyone was making videos on right before 2020, it's all piracy. Like even if you bought all the DVDs yourself and ripped them, sharing them with dozens of friends, that is piracy. That is breaking the law, the rules. Like it's one of those things where everyone does it to a degree and no one's going to tattle on each other. But like you got to recognize that that's a problem for a company that wants to run a profitable business off of this. Like obviously that that's a problem and like if you're going to do that that kind of extra functionality kind of makes sense as a paid feature but the fact that it's been around as long as it has and this has been available freely this entire time and that they again plex itself is not responsible for any of the load not not the streaming bandwidth not the hosting of the files, not the server hardware, not the transcoding of the media. At no point is this costing Plex anything other than a basic account login that they could have left off in the first place. It feels incredibly anti-user and is burning a lot of their users to the extent that I am happy to report, I guess, that Plex is probably just cut off like its last grasp at relevance at this point. You take away a beloved feature that was introduced at a time where everyone was realizing they wanted it, wanted it, 
you ruin the mobile app when Linus has been calling for improvements to the iOS and other mobile apps for a long time because downloads kept breaking. It seems like they were trying to fix that but ruined everything else. And now you're taking away a core feature that tons of your user base paying or otherwise wanted and putting it behind a paywall. It sucks. It sucks to see something that you supported for so long and that was such a force for good in this space go so wrong. It's also kind of vindicating. Everyone thought I was crazy when I was like, hey, they're going to start doing this stuff soon. Sure, it may have taken five or six years, but they've been building to it this entire time since they started making those changes. Jellyfin is great. I, 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 I want to say that. Jellyfin is not perfect. Like I said, I have some weird issues with it pulling up duplicate shows or looking up shows kind of funky. The, the UI and some of the apps is a little messy, but it's free. It's open source. It supports all of these things freely. It will basically never charge you a dime. You might have to pay for some of the client apps at some point if the devs need to make that up, but that's fine. And it supports subtitles in a competent way that doesn't nuke your performance. Just go use Jellyfin. And remember to be kind. Rewind. <laughs>